We're blessed today to be joined by the inspirational Tanya Manwaring, who is a mother and breast cancer survivor. Tanya, it's an absolute pleasure to have you with us here today. Thank you. You know, um, it's, it's kind of a, a common fear among women that as they're going through those checks, they might someday find something. And um, I'm wondering about that initial experience that you have. I understand that it was around the time that you had a, a holiday, a family holiday planned. Yes, yes, we had a trip planned uh, to Tasmania. And uh, in October of that year, this is 2016, I noticed a little bit of blood from one of my nipples. And I thought that's highly unusual. Mm. I should probably get that checked out. Sorry, uh, I went sorry. Blood? Blood, yes. That's not something we're normally told no, about. No, it's yeah. not. We're so um, trained to look for lumps that yeah. I hadn't really initially thought that that would be an issue. So I went straight to the doctor to get it checked out and she didn't seem overly concerned. Mm. But she said, come back in a couple of weeks if it's still happening. And um, your body talks to you though. Wow. So I had a little yeah. bit of pain about a week later and I thought, this is my body trying to communicate. Mm. So I went back mm. to the doctor who then scheduled a mammogram and an ultrasound. And after a very long day at the hospital, after a lot of tests, they determined it was a stage three uh, in breast cancer. So, oh, wow. Wow. yeah, a bit of a shock. I'm just a bit. So, when you're saying blood, right? Are you yes. thinking like a trickle, like a droplet? Or? Yeah, just a couple of drops. Oh. So I, no I just noticed the, the bra was sticking and I thought, what is that? Oh. And Ouch. I thought, um, you know, you've been through breastfeeding and, you know, yeah. that's normal, but it had been six years since I'd breastfed, so I thought that's obviously something else. So, oh. yeah, it's uh, it was just not normal behaviour. So I thought, get it checked out. Mm. Yes. So what kind of treatment did you get for it? I understand you're at the Sydney Adventist Hospital. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah, do you mind just kind of running us through that? Yes, so um, I had chemotherapy first. So within a couple of uh, weeks, of the diagnosis I was in for chemotherapy and I had um, three months of chemotherapy so I came into the ward every week and then I had a mastectomy in the April so a little bit of a break after that and then six weeks of radiation so and was that um, on one side so yes just on the right side so mm. one side only mm. so. you have children I do I How have three old? girls so at the time they were nine seven and six Oh, so young. Yeah, quite young, oh, three girls. Wow. So. And how did you find this balance of being a mom and, you know, having to deal with your own health at the same time? Oh, just so lucky to have such a fabulous hospital in the sand just down the road. Um, I'm a stay-at-home mum, so I had the time during when I dropped them at school, I would come straight to the hospital. They understood my time frame as well, so they always made sure that my appointments were within nine to three, and I'm only ten minutes down the road, so I found it quite easy to manage that mm. um, and very lucky to have such a fabulous service so close to home. Mm. So so did you tell your children and how much of it did you tell your children? My husband and I decided we would tell the children that we felt it was important for them to understand what was happening and, and we could tell that in, you know, in child terms as well. We didn't go into graphic detail but we explained, you know, chemotherapy as little soldiers going through the blood and, <laughs> and you know, fighting the, yeah. the tumour and they came to the hospital, they met the oh, nurses, really? they went into some of the procedures, saw the cannulas and they were very open to the science um, and learning about what was happening so mm. I'm glad we told them as well. It's good to be honest and open. And what was that conversation like with your husband? Like when you, was he there with you when you got your diagnosis? No, or? he wasn't. Uh, he travels for work, so I waited until he got home. And uh, he tells me that I told him like I had an ingrown toenail or something. <laughs> I was very just pragmatic. Matter of, matter of fact. <laughs> I was in mum mode. I was on autopilot. And he said I just, I wasn't sort of what I was expecting. So um, I think I just did that thing where when you're caring for younger children, mm. you just get on mm. with doing what you have to do. But I think I sort of came unstuck a little bit further down the track when you know I was in the middle of treatment but um, yeah no he was great he's a rock and did you feel like you could kind of relax and when you were at the treatment you know because if you're in front of your family you yes. have to be everything for everybody but absolutely you're treatment, you're absolutely to be and you can just let your guard down you don't have to be the strong um, mummy all the time you can just be the patient and um, they gave me the space in the ward to do that and very very understanding so that was good mm. yeah. I was thinking like okay. with, with your journey right there that could be tinged with a lot of fear and sadness. Mm. Did you? How did you go around juggling that and facing that with you and your children? Uh, it's hard to say. I think how I would do it if I was imagining it would be different to how you actually do it when it's happening <laughs> because you've just got to get on. I, I didn't tell the children straight away so of course they're just like where's dinner and you know mm, what's happening yeah. and you know they distract you um, but that fear was in the back of my mind and I realised that that fear came from a place of not understanding what I was about to go through. I didn't understand the science. I'd had my cancer education through the media so mm. I really didn't know anything and then once I sat down with the doctor and the oncologist and understood the plan and what was going to happen it was nothing really too 
to be fearful about. Mm. Uh, I felt that I got the information that I needed and that it was clear that they were going to get rid of it um, so I could just be the patient and take on what I needed to do. I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you were able to keep your hair, weren't you? Yes, throughout I chemo. Was. Yes. How did that positive... I assume it was a positive impact on your mm. family. Like, it wouldn't have been as confronting. Yes, um, exactly. What were your feelings with that? I was very surprised. Yeah. I made the assumption that I would lose it, so I cut it as short as possible. Oh, really? <laughs> because I assumed it would go. Yeah. And um, they said very early on in the orientation session, one of the nurses pulled me aside and said, we've got a new technology that will apply to your particular chemotherapy protocol. It's not... It doesn't work for everybody, but it was the particular drug that I had. And she said, you're going to be able to keep your hair, possibly. So, wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it was a, a Paxman cold cap, which is a relatively new invention, and uh, it is a bit like an ice cream headache um, for the first few minutes, but it's worth it. Just to, you know, it's an extraordinary invention. Yes. So it looked like a war you know, wallaby when I had that cap on. And, uh, so, yeah, I did keep it, and it was less confronting for the children. Mm. And what would you say to other women who are facing this kind of diagnosis or, um, you know? Yes. Get the information, listen to your doctors, um, go and find out everything you possibly can and, um, and just take comfort in the knowledge that there is new science every single time I go into that hospital, there is something new that they can tell me about. There was a new treatment that I received that wasn't available six months prior. So really? just so find out the information <laughs> and don't, don't work off rumour, work off fact. Mm. Mm. And did you find that you were able to find community in the other women who oh, were going, th totally. going through it? Yes, yeah. totally. Uh, women came from everywhere, reached out to me. Um, it's a little bit like once you have something, all people, lots of people come out of the woodwork and come and reach out to you and tell you um, their stories. And people who'd been going about their day who I had no idea about um, mm. just came and, and spoke to me and I thought, there's this whole village around me now. Mm. And, but you have to be open and vulnerable to that to receive that as well. So you can't just be stoic and walk around like you have managing everything, you have to let your guard down and, and let people in to help you. Have to mm. come out of mum mode, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly oh. right. Tanya, I want to thank you so much for sharing this with us. It's something that all women think about at some point yes. in their lives. You know, mm. if you've been inspired as much as I have today by Tanya's story, then I want you to definitely um, tell us there in the comment section. She's definitely turned what can often be a story of fear into a story of hope. Since October um, is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we want to encourage all of you lovely ladies to remember to continue your regular self-checks and to make sure you're taking care of yourself as much as you're taking care of those around you. If you've loved spending this time with us today and you're wondering how you can have more fun with us, don't worry, you can watch us with additional episodes on YouTube, our Facebook account, and on Instagram. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.